Number 15. On a trip, you notice that a 3.5 kilogram bag of ice lasts an average of one day in your cooler. What is the average power in watts entering the ice if it starts at zero degrees Celsius and completely melts to zero degrees Celsius water in exactly one day? All right. So first thing is, I'm going to show you a different way to approach a problem like this. I think I did it on chap, uh, number uh, 10 in this chapter. Uh, I'm going to show a slightly different way to approach it. So see, you know, check out number 10 and then check out this one and see which way you like it. So uh, they're talking about watts. Now watts, you have to know, is a unit for power. Okay, which means that if I'm talking about power, then we have to recall the formula. And power is equal to energy divided by time. Right, energy is in joules, time is in seconds, and hence it is equal to basically unit-wise joules per second. Notice over here, ladies and gentlemen, what that says. Okay, so that should hopefully make sense. All right, now, let's just backtrack for a second. Now, it says energy. Well, in this problem, we're talking, what type of energy, right? Well, in this problem, we're talking about heat energy, basically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply take the E and just call it Q. Why? Because Q is a type of energy, right? It's a specific heat energy. And that's the only energy that's in this problem. So instead of calling it just general energy, I'm just going to call it heat energy, since that's the only energy in the problem. Now, what we want to do is we want to find uh, power. Okay, so that means I need to know basically Q and T more or less. But now I realize, so let's just put this aside. Let me box this formula. Okay, so I take care of that. They're talking about power, so I write down my power formula. Next thing I'm going to notice is that they're talking about now ice, if it starts to, and completely melts basically to water. So then I'm thinking about, well, heat transferred and we're talking about changing states. Oh, that must be, be the latent heat formula, right, over here, basically. All right, where it says that the heat energy gained or lost is equal to the mass of that particular object, or I should say the mass that has changed phase, even more specifically, multiplied then by the uh, latent heat of fusion or vaporization, depending upon if it's freezing to solid, excuse me, if it's solid to liquid or liquid to solid, versus... Uh, solid, excuse me, versus liquid to gas and gas to liquid, all right? Vaporization is uh, gas to liquid or liquid to gas, and fusion is going to be solid to liquid and liquid and liquid to gas. Oh, my goodness, I did it again. My God. Liquid to solid. Sorry, guys. I don't know what's going on with me today. Um, actually, I just I just started exercising again, so maybe that's it. My mind's all like, oh, my God, my my, my muscles. I don't even know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, ju just just erase the past 10 seconds from your memory. All right, so now let's write down the formula here. So Q is equal to ML, all right? Now, specifically, since I know we're going from a solid then to a liquid, I'm going to, we're talking about the latent heat of fusion, all right? Now, notice you have two equations, right? What do they have in common? Hmm, interesting. They have a Q in common. So what do we like to do when that's the case? We like to substitute stuff, right? We like to substitute things. So why don't we do this? We're after the power, so I want to uh, use this formula in terms of my calculations, right? P is equal to Q over T. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to substitute basically this result on in for Q because they are equivalent to one another, right? That's what this says. So let's do it. So power then is equal to the mass of the uh, object that has melted uh, multiplied then by the latent heat of fusion of that solid or to liquid or liquid uh, to solid divided then by the time over which uh, this energy uh, transfer has occurred. So I know everything now, right? We have power being equal to the mass. Well, what's the mass? They told us it was 3.5 kilograms that actually does melt. So that's the mass that actually melts, 3.5. The latent heat of fusion of, of, of uh, water is, that's looked up, okay? This is going to be 334. That's kilojoule, uh, excuse me, yeah, that's kilojoules per kilogram, all right? But you should convert that value into um, joules. So just multiply this by 1,000, basically, or 10 raised to the 3, 
Okay, that will be in the appropriate units. When you look up the number on the table, please check the top of the table, and you'll notice that this is 334 kilojoules. You'll see it at the top. Then divided now by the time over which this energy is being transferred. How long did they tell us it's being transferred? They said one, one day. Okay, well, what time unit do we need in the denominator? Not days, but seconds, right? So we're basically going to do our conversion of one day. And I'm just going to write it all down here. One day, days on the bottom, hours on the top, 24 hours in a day. And then you might be able to go to seconds from here, right? Hours, seconds, there are 3,600 seconds in one hour. And then you'll get your answer. All right, so just let's do the math. So 3.5 times 334 times 10 to the third, divided now by, in parentheses, 24 times 3,600. And voila. So the power here is going to be about 35, uh, 35, what am I doing? 13.5. Sorry, guys, my brain is a little off at the moment. 13.5, uh, and I guess three sig figs. Yeah, that's fine. 13.5 uh, watts, a.k.a. joules per second. There you go. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Give us a hand, please. All right, please, 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 I'm begging you. I'm begging you, please. I'm literally on my knees right now. Please, 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 hit the subscribe button. If you can, great. If you can't, no, no worries. All right. We appreciate it very much either way that you're taking the time to watch the video. Take care.